So in this video, we're going to talk about the supported migration paths to go from a Windows vCenter server 5.5 or 6.0 to a vCenter server appliance 6.5. And we'll also talk a little bit about Update Manager because there's an extra little bit of configuration needed if Update Manager is external. So first, we'll just talk about a couple of little requirements involved in supported migration paths. So we support all recommended topologies for both 5.5 and 6.0. To look at those supported topologies, see KB Article 2108548. We support migrating from an external Oracle or external Microsoft SQL database to the embedded v Postgres database. External Update Manager servers will be migrated to become embedded Update Managers on the VCSA 6.5. You must migrate your entire SSO or PSE layer first before migrating any of the vCenters if the SSO or PSEs are external. And as we said earlier, other products like SRM or Horizon View, if they're co-located with the vCenter server, they should be moved prior to migration as that machine will be shut down. And migrations should be performed sequentially and not serially. So do one at a time and not all at the same time. So let's first take a look at a very basic example for going from a vSphere 5.5 embedded to a 6.5. So on the left, we've got our vCenter server 5.5 Windows. Everything is embedded on the same machine and it's just a single migration of a VM. So we'll go from a Windows vCenter 5.5 to a 6.5 appliance. Very straightforward. If we look at the vCenter 5.5 distributed setup, so if you remember in vSphere 5.5, we could have the SSO, vCenter, inventory service, and web client all on their own unique machines. So in this example, it's the worst case scenario where we have the web client, inventory, SSO, and vCenter all on separate machines. We don't have to actually worry about the web client machine or the inventory service machine. We only need to focus on the SSO machine and the vCenter server machine. So we would migrate the SSO machine first to become our new PSE appliance 6.5. And once that's complete, we'll migrate the vCenter to be a vCenter server appliance 6.5. Scaling that out even more, where we've got two of each. Again, we would forget about the web client and inventory service for both setups. And again, migrate both SSOs first to become our new PSEs. And once the SSO layer has been migrated, we would migrate the vCenter servers. So it's very straightforward. The only thing, the biggest takeaway here is to just focus on your SSO machines first and then focus on your vCenter server machines. If you've got a distributed inventory service or web client, you don't need to worry about those for the purpose of the migration. And once the migrations of your SSO and vCenter is complete, you can safely power off the inventory service, web client machines and decommission them from your environment. Now looking at vSphere 6.0, it's a little bit more simple. So again, on the left here, we've got vCenter 6.0 all embedded, everything on one machine. It's a simple single VM migration to a, a, a vCenter server appliance 6.5. In a distributed setup in vSphere 6.0, we would have our PSE machines and our vCenter machines. And again, we would just migrate the PSE machines first to become our appliances on 6.5 and then migrate the vCenters to become vCSA 6.5. So again, migrate the SSO or the PSE layer first, and then migrate the vCenter server layer. Now, let's just talk briefly about Update Manager. So in vCenter server appliance 6.5, Update Manager is now an embedded service. If you're running a vCenter server on Windows with an external Update Manager, meaning that it exists on its own separate virtual machine, we need to run an instance of the Migration Assistant on the Update Manager machine first before running the instance on the vCenter server machine. So we'd run the Migration Assistant first on the Update Manager machine and then launch it on the vCenter machine. The Update Manager baseline, baseline groups, patch repository will be migrated. If Update Manager is co-located with the vCenter server, meaning it exists on the same machine, we don't have to do anything special. But at the end, the two will be combined into a single vCenter server appliance where Update Manager exists embedded onto the vCSA 6.5. So in the next video, we'll talk about some other considerations 
that are of note when performing some migrations, um, typically around the ESXi syslog collector, dump collector, and a note on local operating system users. I hope you enjoyed this video.